Well, you met the original. Now it's time to meet Big Brother. Shave it up! Hey everybody, Clean Shaver here, and it is Friday again. I wasn't actually planning on doing a second video on Friday, but uh, I got to be part of a pretty cool pass around, and so I felt like I wanted to do one anyway. So I released the part two of my during my shave routine video earlier today. You can check that out, I'll put a link in the description here. But today we are going to talk about the Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements Double Open Comb Evolution Stainless Razor. Okay, now, this, so I was honored to be part of a pass around that uh, Douglas Smythe invited a few people to be part of, and uh, looking for our feedback, looking for our input, and uh, our thoughts on the razor. So let's go ahead and get right into that. Now, any of you who have watched my razor reviews know that I grade on four things, design, efficiency, price, and cool factor. So, let's get into design. Now the design of this razor is such that, well, it's inspired by the original double open comb razor, which I'll put a picture right here. It was made out of nickel, I believe, or no, it was, he came out with a couple versions of it. Uh, one that was nickel plated, one that was satin finish. Pretty inexpensive razor, it was $35 if I'm not mistaken, and uh, gained almost instant popularity as a very mild shaver. I tried it out, I actually owned one for a while. Uh, I ended up selling it as part of a fundraiser. But, uh, and I enjoyed shaving with it. It was about one of the only razors that I could use a feather blade in and not get cut up at all. That's because it was very, very mild. Um, great head shaver, uh, a little tricky to find the angle on, but um, this is inspired by that design. Uh, that one, the uh, teeth on the open comb are a bit closer together, obviously, um, but a very solid performing razor. Now this, uh, whew, very different, <laughs> very different. So let's get into it. This is, uh, you know, it's machined out of stainless steel, obviously, otherwise it wouldn't be a stainless steel razor. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you can see, you know, obviously double open comb. So comb on top, comb on the bottom. Now the idea behind the double open comb, I believe, is to allow more of the lather to pass through as you're shaving. Uh, it's inspired by some older designs and uh, it, it is very efficient. It's a good shaver. It's a good design. This particular razor, when it is all loaded up, is about 95, 97 grams. So it comes in just under that uh, that 100 gram mark, which to me is just a little bit light. The handle itself is you know, very well knurled. You can see there's a lot of grip there and uh, has this little, uh, he's referred to it as, the, as, as a bomb tail or bomber handle. Um, I, I believe Douglas gave it the nickname of the pinky throttle. Put it in your hand. You got the pinky right there to add some pressure if you want. The uh, the design of the razor, I I had to give some or give us some points to take away some points. I, I really debated on it. I landed at about 8.5. Now I'll explain why. Like I said, the the razor is uh, comes in just under that hundred gram mark, which to me is just a it was lighter than I expected from a stainless steel razor. Not necessarily a bad thing. I generally prefer heavier razors above the 100 gram mark, but it's so close that it was just like, eh, it's a little borderline. Uh, the handle itself, I felt was like just a little bit short, but that's easily fixable. You can try it with a different handle and have a different experience. That's not a problem. And I'd imagine that eventually, they'll, he'll be offering just the head itself, so you could pair it with a handle that you already own if you want to do that. The actual head design, let's talk about that a little bit. So. You'll notice on the razor here, I'll see if I can get that to zoom correctly or focus in. There's not a ton of blade gap. There's, there's some, but it's pretty moderate. The blade is held nice and snug. You see how the teeth come over the blade there. There's not a lot of distance between the tip of the teeth and the actual end of the blade. Uh, so that helps to hold the blade nice and rigid and makes it so that there's not a lot of wobble or, or flick with the blade, which can help it to give a more comfortable feel, more comfortable shave. According to Douglas, the, the geometry of this head, or at least the geometry of the blade, is exactly the same as the original double open comb. Now, whether that is true, I don't really know. The, the angle that the blade is put at, it's really interesting how, how it works. Uh, if we were to make a comparison, 
I would say the original doc, uh, double open comb is like a, it w would be like Dr. Jekyll. And this one, the stainless steel evolution, would be like Mr. Hyde. Or at least uh, like that, uh, that, that guy at the gym that's hopped up on steroids and has uh, some temperament issues. It's not necessarily a bad thing. It is a very efficient, very aggressive shaver. I'll get into that here in just a little bit. One thing that I didn't really care for, and I wonder if it affects the shave, is you see the, the head here. Let's see if I can get that to focus. Okay, maybe it will, maybe it won't. You can see how the end of the blade, I mean, the head covers all of the blade, which makes it just a little bit wider than, say, a Rockwell 6S. You can see how the blade tabs stick out just a little bit on that. So take that for what it's worth. Now, I notice how the corner of the blade there actually doesn't have something holding it down. And I've, I've kind of wondered if it's possible that that might add a little bit of flick to the blade. And so I wonder if maybe a, a tweak to the design and having this last spot here come over just a little bit to hold that edge down might make it a little bit more comfortable. I don't know. I do have some qualms about the design, but I also really like the design. I mean, it, it's obviously very well thought out. I like the machine markings on the bottom. It's a, it's a nice touch. I actually, instead of the super high polished or anything like that, it, you can see some of the, uh, the grooved machine markings. So we'll see how well I can get that to show up. Maybe not. Yeah, so it's not a super high high finish or anything like that, but it's still clean. It looks nice. It's it's uniformly done and it's not messy. Um, and you know the the top, pardon the fingerprints on there, but it is very well polished and, and it does look nice on the top. The design on the inside here. If we look, if we take the base plate off and we just look at the top cap, uh, you you know in about the tie razors how there's just a little bit of a nub on the inside of the top cap that holds the blade in place. In this case, there are two that hold the blade in place and it goes right in between the two little spots on the blade. So interesting design there. Um, the actual quality of the machining is very good. Uh, I, I like that aspect of it. It's very nice. So I, I decided, like I said, to give it an 8.5. I didn't feel like it was deserving of the 10 because I had some qualms about it, but I also do like uh, the design. I feel like it's, it's well put together, it's well machined, it is well thought out. Um, there, I think there might just be a couple little tweaks that could make it really, really good for me. The efficiency, I gave it a nine. Now, the reason why is because this is a very efficient razor, very efficient shaver. I, th there were, a couple days, so I've, I've shaved with this five or six times now, and uh, I, I've done a few shaves where it was uh, like a, a two shave or two pass shave. I've done a few shaves where it's a three pass. Uh, on the two pass ones, I felt like I got a good shave. Uh, I, I didn't feel like I had to go for that third pass unless I was really being OCD about what was going on. It is really aggressive. I will say that right now. There's tons of blade feel. There's not a lot of blade flick, so there's a difference there. There's a lot of blade feel, and so a lot of people will probably feel that this is a very aggressive razor, and it is. It's a, it's a very, very different animal from the original DLC. In fact, I made the mistake of shaving with this uh, on my head the first time I ever used it, and I, I've kind of made a rule for my, myself now that if I get a new razor, I try it on my face first, not on my head. <laughs> I went and did the whole thing, and I just wasn't used to the razor yet. I hadn't gotten a good feel for it, and so it kind of chewed me up. That being said, I used a feather in this today, and usually feathers tear me up like none other. No problems. Give a great shave. Really sharp and really effective, but no real problems with it. So, there is that. So, efficiency, I gave it a 9. Again, I, 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 it, it is a very efficient razor, but I think it was just most people are probably going to find it too aggressive to be deserving of that 10 mark, so I had to bring it down a little bit. It is very, effe very efficient pretty aggressive. So if you like aggressive razors, great. You'll probably really like this. But if you're not a big fan, you might want to steer clear of it. Now price. Price, I decided to give it an 8.5. This razor comes in at, in at $175, which is right in the ballpark for a lot of the higher end uh, stainless machined razors. Uh, you know, like the above the tie razor series, for instance. So it's right in that ballpark. I do feel like the, the aluminum version of this, which is obviously going to be a very different feel, very different weight, uh, I do feel like the aluminum would probably be
be a better value for most people because it's going to be much, uh, you know, far less expensive, but also, you know, same build quality, same uh, design in the head, but it's, it's also going to give a different feel. I can't speak from experience because I haven't tried the aluminum, but I have a feeling more people would probably see the aluminum as a better value because you get the head more or less at a lower price and you can always pair it up with a heavier handle to help compensate for that. So I have a feeling more people will probably go to the uh, aluminum side, but the stainless, I do feel like it is a good value. Uh, it's, it's very well machined, very well put together. So I give it an 8.5, not ideal. I feel like people will probably veer toward the aluminum version of it, but I do feel like it's a fair price, especially considering what it's made of and the time it probably takes to make it. So I 8.5. Cool factor, 9.5. The reason why I think this thing looks freaking cool. I mean, it, it almost is literally a work of art uh, in how it in how it's put together. I've taken pictures of it from several angles and really, really like the the lines, how it's all put together, how uniformly. I mean, let's take the blade out for a second. Um, how the teeth on it line up, and how uh, I mean, it's it's. It is pretty beastly looking. It's pretty aggressive looking. Like I, I showed it to a coworker of mine who's, he has a wedge shaver, but he's not a hobbyist. And uh, he was like, dude, I would never touch my face with that. It looks really scary. And I can understand his point because that looks really scary, but it also looks really cool. I really like the looks of it. Uh, and the name, uh, the, you know, the, the double open comb evolution, I think is a cool name for the razor. Uh, I do think it has that cool factor. And because it's a higher end, uh, it, it's a higher quality, higher build uh, to it. I do think it's cool. Uh, and, and so I give it the 9.5. Now that brings us to a total of 35.5 out of 40, which is an 89%, 88.75, I think is the exact total, but 89%, which is a B plus. So it is a good razor. Uh, I think a lot of people will really enjoy it. Uh, there are a few things that you'd probably want to be aware of. It is a, it is an aggressive razor. If you aren't careful with it, it will bite you. Uh, so definitely if you get this razor, take some time to learn how it works and learn how it feels. Uh, and this is not something I would recommend necessarily for a brand new shaver. This is for somebody who's, who really, who can appreciate how it works and can really work with it. Before I wrap up, I want to make a few blade recommendations based on my experience with it. I would recommend three blades. Uh, first, the Voskhod uh, Teflon coated blade from Russia. I, they're my favorite blade. I love them. Uh, they work in virtually every razor I've ever tried and they work perfectly for me. Uh, I also got to try the Persona Lab Blues. So that's my number two recommendation. Persona Lab Blues uh, are another go-to uh, blade for me. Very good value for the price. I'd recommend using them in, in this razor. Uh, I'd also, if you're brave, uh, I'd also recommend using a feather high stainless. Maybe try stropping the blade first, uh, you know, on an actual strop or on your pants or whatever, or, or a cork or whatever you want to do. But um, be aware, they are very sharp blades. They can bite you. Uh, but it did give a very, very efficient shave for me. So that's it for my video. I appreciate you guys watching and, uh, and thank you, Douglas, for sending me the razor. I will now be sending it on to uh, David Gonzalez. To get to for him to give some of his thoughts on the razor so i uh, appreciate you guys watching thank you everybody for checking out my channel don't forget to like favorite subscribe make sure that you check out the uh phoenix artisan accoutrements double open comb evolution stainless steel razor that is a mouthful douglas why do you come up with such long names thanks for watching everybody make sure to find me on all my social media outlets facebook instagram twitter google plus voice bite kick snapchat they're all down in the description and again don't forget to subscribe and if you have subscribed, make sure to click that little bell button that will let you know anytime I post a new video. So thanks everybody for watching. Be smooth and shave it up. We'll see you next time.